Yo, hello and good morning guys. I'm back. So day two. I'm really bad at YouTube videos, so hopefully this doesn't come out like shit. Okay, so over the next few days, as I've said yesterday, we'll be going over the rating specs for Warlocks, all right? Rather than bunching it all up in one min or one long video where I talk a mile a minute like I usually do, I'm going to still talk a mile a minute, but I'm going to keep it in little short videos going by each spec so you don't have to like skip around and shit, you know what I mean? Uh, just like the Felgard video, which will be linked above somewhere here if I can figure out how to do it, uh, so you can take a look if you need it. This won't be a very well-scripted video. It's not getting edited. All that crap just i just wanted to go shoot off the hip here and give you guys my honest opinion on the specs now that tbc is finally out and i've been able to rate as much as i possibly can in each of these specs uh, at the end i'll build a talent build and instead of just showing you it we'll go over each one as well okay um before we begin as usual this is my opinion it's subjective if you don't like what i say or you got a different opinion let's beef it out in the comments or better yet in the warlock discord where you can find any and all questions and content regarding warlocks and of course the math on these specs so let's get started What's up, guys? You want to uh, do me a favor and go ahead and uh, fucking subscribe? Huh? Make that red button turn gray for me, please. Thank you. Oh, Fire Destro. Fire Destro is easily the most talked about rating spec when it comes to Warlocks. Well, not everybody will choose to go Fire Destro like myself. A large majority of Warlocks are quickly flocking to this newfound powerful spec. And for good reason. Fire Destro is not just a powerful spec, but quite simply put, on single target fights or fights with minimal, minimal mechanics and movements and shit, Fire is the highest damaging spec that you can possibly be. Creeping slightly ahead of Felguard on a single target while leaving a slightly larger gap in comparison to Shadow Destro, all right? The Fire Destruction build itself, which we will go over in the end, I think, utilizes literally every uh, everything on the destruction side by specking deep into the destruction, picking up everything and every picking up every and all fire damaging talents. Not only that, but you're also dipping your toes in the demonology to pick up demonic sacrifice, which will use to sacrifice your imp for 15% more fire damage. There's a shit ton of fire multipliers, and this all boosts your damage exponentially, right? Especially at a low gear level. This guild is very, very good for those in bad gear. While not as friendly as the Felguard build, simply because your Felguard kind of like doesn't care about how much hit rating you have, and he has his own threat table, and blah, blah, blah. But like, fires, I mean, fire still gets gated behind that spell hit that you need. But other than that, bro, like you, the, the, all the fire, fire multipliers, is, this is just a good spec if you have very bad gear. And this is that video right now. This was on the beta. This is the only time I was doing fire. And I had absolute, as you guys know, we all had absolute shit gear right now. So this is in shit gear with Fire Destro. Imagine, I've never even casted Incinerate with Spellfire, so I can only imagine how powerful, I mean, how good that feels. You know what I mean? So a couple more huge reasons why this build is so powerful is because of the new TBC consumable called Flame Caps, which we'll put on the screen right now. Bam! This boosts your fire damage by 80 for one minute. To put it in perspective of how much spell power that is, well, fire damage, but you get it. It's the same as a flask, except for it's only fire damage, okay? It's huge and cheap to get off the auction house, and it's literally a must-have. If you're an herbalist, you can pick them too, whatever. Legit, do not run this build without flame caps. Otherwise, you're just making other fire deshos look bad, all right? Another reason that differs greatly from both Felguard and Shadow Destro is the craftables. While, yes, Felguard and Shadow Destro both have an amazing craftable set to boost their shadow damage, fire has the exact fucking same thing, except not only do they have a better set bonus, which is weird, but they also have crit rating on each piece, which is also weird. I don't know why I didn't do that for Shadow, and I'm upset about it. Anyway... And not a small amount either. It's 69 crit rating total, bro, from gain from the three pieces from Spellfire. It's kind of nutty. I'll show the Frozen Shadow Weave robe and the Spellfire chest right now to show you the comparison. And now you can see why, you know, different set bonuses, crit on the Fire Robe, it'll crit on all the pieces. Now, on the main thing you need for this build, the spicy topic here, Fire Mage. You need a Fire Mage to keep up this beautiful talent right here called Improved Scorch. Otherwise, this build loses some shine and gets bumped back down under Felguard and closer to Shadow Destro. So... The issue lies with mages in their meta. If the meta leans towards them being fire, then there's no issue for you to go fire dash and you can safely do it and pump. However, if the meta leans towards arcane, which mages are slowly starting to edge toward now that they're getting craftables, and of course going into T5, they'll be arcane as well, then you have to talk one of your mages to bite the bullet and go fire. Unless you have a gracious mage, and we all know that that might be a hard thing to do because fuck mages. Another option is for the mage to spec arcane fire, otherwise known as arc fire, rather than arcane frost, otherwise known as arc frost. This is a minimal DPS loss for the mage, while allowing for all of your Warlocks to go Fire Destro, which is a personal DPS gain for not only you, but all your Warlocks. Thus, it is an overall raid DPS as well. Now, whether you not have an Arcane Fire Mage is completely dependent upon personal and guild preferences. But what if you have your Fire Mage? But what if you have your Fire Mage, your Flame Caps, and your Spellfire? Well, guess what? You'll be pumping. Hard. So enjoy it and get those parses, baby, all right? All right, that's it for this one, guys. But before we go, I want to answer this one thing before it gets asked in the comments, considering I get asked 4.6 million times a day on stream. Cricks, 
If fire is so fucking good, why are you not fire? Simply put, guys, it's a personal preference, all right? I love the Felguard build, and to be honest, if Felguard wasn't as good as it is, then I would be fire. I'm not choosing to go shadow for Shadow Destro over Felguard. I mean, over fire. I'm choosing to go Felguard over fire in T4. Another reason is that I'm building for T5. Since T4 content is done, there's literally no point in building for T4 just to swap to T5, where I do not think fire will be the play. I think, I think, I generally in my heart believe that Felguard and Shadow Destro will be the top specs in T5. Uh, we're going to have to wait to see that, obviously. Uh, I know there's Sims on it, but that's different than seeing it in person and all the fights and stuff, as you guys know. So, especially considering the mage situation in T5. This is my speculation and completely subjective. Do not buy my head off, please. Oh, and one more reason why I'm not playing fire. The biggest reason, maybe. If I wanted to play fire, I'd be a fucking mage, guys. Like, spamming incinerate kills my warlock lore in my head with being the master of the dark arts. And Uh-oh. Let me know how I feel about mages, but I don't want to rant about them right now, okay? That's just a personal reason. Outside of that, boys, fire is amazing, and don't let it deter you to try for trying it out yourself. So now we're going to go ahead and build the spec for you and just talk about it real quick, just why I do it, okay? So simply put, just in, you're not going to have anything in Affliction. Going straight into demo demonology, you're doing the typical stuff to get down the dim sack, right? You're going to put, this is the typical route to demon demonic sacrifice. It's the only thing you really can benefit from. So we're just putting all this down here. Nothing so e easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Nothing crazy. You have one extra point to put here to get the Thess. Everybody typically does this. This doesn't matter because it's sack. So you really can put this fucking anywhere. You might have an emergency where you, you do that. You can do whatever you want. But either way, just get down to here, okay? Next up, we're taking all talents down to get to Shadow and Flame. Now, starting with the spicy talent right away, immediately. ISB or Cataclysm. Okay. Here's what I think. Cataclysm's fucking gross. It's garbage. It's actual trash. It's literally hot ass. Literal doo-doo water? Literal doo-doo water. And I'm so shocked that people actually take this. It blows my mind. Now, the only time that I would take this is if you are 1,000% uh, what's a good example? If you are 1,000% sure, you are not going to be doing anything at all with ISB. The reason I say ISB is nice is because with ISB, right? This is, imagine if you will, you're in a dungeon or a raid, whatever you want to do, right? And you, you have a trash pack in front of you of two. You're, you're obviously, your imp is sacrificed. You're only two mob, you emulate, you incinerate, you're spamming, you kill them. But the next trash pack is a trap, pa I mean, a pack of six, right? And then after that is a pack of two and then six and then two. And then six, right? Example. This is just an example. This is not real life. But in those situations, you're supposed to be sacking your imp for the two, sacking your succubus for the fucking six, sacking your... Because you have to sacrifice your, your succubus in order to do AoE damage, right? That's like the big point of the spec is that in order to do AoE damage, you have to then sacrifice your succubus so you can get min maximize it. You don't have to. You can just seed spam with your imp out, but you're missing 15% of your damage. So it's obviously, if you're doing anything about maximizing, you should 100% sack your succubus, right? So the issue is that you are you going to sack your succubus for one pack and then sacrifice your imp for the next pack and then succubus and the imp no if you just go isb you can sacrifice your succubus seed spam your heart out and then just shadow bolt the next two pack for the same bit the same damage obviously this sucks if you're wearing spellfire right so this is why you have alternate pieces with your spellfire once you get spellfire you're kind of like if you don't have the alternate pieces for the chest the robe and the gloves you're kind of screwed really like it's not hard to get those extra pieces you can definitely run a nice off sheet you can run t4 chest you can run you know, any of the gloves that you can get for mags or uh, help, 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 attunement, uh, you know, or world boss if you're that lucky. You can girdle ruination. You can get you can get these things to help you with that. It just costs a little bit more money and you're going to be fine. But yeah, you should have a trash set anyway. But with your trash set, you would be sacrificing your succubus. And with that, you can succubus throughout that six pack, that two pack, that six pack, that two pack, that six pack, pull your impact out for the boss. So this is why I go in Shadow Bolt. Um, I guess I can say this is subjective again um, to choose it. It's objectively known that Cataclysm is shit, but. A lot of people choose Cataclysm. If it's a situation, like I said, where you're strictly, you're literally, you know you're never going to ISB. Like, you literally know that you are never going to ISB. Then do it. Doesn't matter. Um, for now, I'm going to go here, though, because this is what I choose. Anyway, Bane, for obvious reasons. Destruction, for obvious reasons. Shadowburn, obvious reasons. Destructive Reach, just for the Reach. And remember, it reduces your threat by 10%. Big threat issues. Two into here. Drop it into here. Or get Ruin, obviously. Which will open up this. Down to five. Down to Backlash. One here. Conflag. Fire. Boom. That's a spec right there, okay? And now, if we're talking about rotational-wise, you're keeping up Immolate full-time, right? Immolate's up full-time. I like to put a Corruption up on pull just to kind of help the threat a little bit, right? And then you are spamming your Incinerates. Now, with Conflag, I get asked this a lot, so I'll throw it in here now. You can flag. If you move, if you have to move, I, the only time I can flag, if I have to move, 
and I am above 70 to 75 percent mana, I, which means I don't need a life tap. Because when you move, you should be trying to life tap. If I'm at 70 to 80 percent of mana, whatever, 75 percent mana, I won't life tap and I'll conflag instead. If you're not running conflag for whatever reason, which is, I guess, would be Shadow Destro, we'll get to do tomorrow, um, you would Shadow Burn instead, right? But so if you have to move and you do not need mana from your life tap at all, whatever your benchmark is, conflag first, Shadow Burn second, plant your feet, go. Now, another thing you got to realize is if, if I just put up an emulate on the, on the boss and then two seconds later I have to move, I won't conflag. I'll shadow burn instead because then I get to plant your feet and put up another emulate. Now, if you have an emulate up on the target and it's like, you know, halfway, a little bit over halfway done, I'll conflag the shit out of that, plant my feet, put up another emulate and keep pumping incinerates, right? Um, so, yeah, that's the build, guys. Hope you guys enjoy that. Hope you understood it. Talking a mile a minute, but that's what I do, baby. Peace. See you tomorrow.